How's that? One of these days I'll get used to this microphone, sorry. So it's good to see everyone today. Welcome to Northside United Methodist Church for our celebration of worship today. Uh, a few announcements before we get started. Um, we received a thank you note from uh, Epworth. Um, it says, what a blessing these gift cards will be to our foster parents and foster children. We really appreciate the support of the United Methodist Churches. That's uh, our church in St. Paul, United Methodist. And we're quick to tell the families about our support. Thanks for spreading the love of our God with our foster care program. That's signed by, I believe that's Carrie Davis. So that's uh, in recognition of the, the gifts that we've provided for them. So that was nice of them to send us that. Um, so we got that out of the way. Um, the, what is that, 18th, 20th, August 20th is the day that we will uh, give out our popsicles this year. That's a little change. Um, that's Friday after the week of school starts. School starts the 17th, is that right? Right, school starts the 17th. We're not doing it the first day because there's enough confusion going on that day for these folks over here at Summit Drive. So we're going to call it a, you made it through the end of the first week kind of thing. It's okay, so um, the upshot of that is I'm going to be here that afternoon giving out popsicles, but it's always good to have some friends helping you do that. So if you would like to help with that, and I think it's pretty easy duty, I think we just hand out popsicles to kids that want them. Um, uh, we would need to be here, and I'll give you a time, but I'm for sure, but sometime about 1.30 probably. Two? But for, uh, two. Okay, Lorraine corrected me and said two. So we'll be here at 2 o'clock to do that, and I'll, uh, if you'd like to help with that, we uh, maybe we'll put a sign-up sheet next Sunday out back for that, Lorraine. Maybe you could help me remember that. So, <clears throat> so that's coming up. I was over at the school last week, and uh, they're having a very hectic time over there, as all schools are, getting ready. But uh, it was good to meet some of those folks over there, and uh, I'm eager to, uh, to partner with them on some things. Um, and in a similar vein, next Sunday will be, our, uh, will be a Sunday in which we celebrate a back-to-school blessing um, for all of the students. And we have teachers here and, and people that work at the schools. So during our worship, we will uh, have a time in which we would offer a blessing for the school year to those folks, and uh, we'll let the people over at, Nor uh, at Summit Drive know that as well. Relating to that, if you look at the back of your bulletin, there's a little, a little spot at the top of the back page, and if you have someone in your family or some friend of yours that you would like us to include in our prayers next week, I ask you just to fill that out. And there's a, there's a little, it says prayer bowl on the table, the, the, the little uh, uh, chest back there. And you could just fill that out and just either, you could put the whole bulletin if you want, just fold it and lay it there. And I will collect those uh, at the end of the day. And uh, we'll include all of those folks in our, uh, in our worship time, our, our back to school blessing next week. Okay. Anything else? Oh, and, and one other thing I would say at the end of the day, at the end of the service today, I'm going to ask Landon and Annie to uh, come down for just a moment because they're getting ready to go to school and we won't be seeing as much of them, unfortunately. But we would like to just offer a little, little blessing and prayer for them as well. So uh, we'll do that right at the end of the ceremony service. If I forget, don't let me forget, okay? All right. All right, any other announcements? There's a, a paper back there for choir sign up. So if you'll consider that over the next couple of weeks, we'd like to get started back. Uh, we'll ease our way back into it. But if you'll just put your name, number, email, and circle the voice part if you know it. If not, we'll figure that out together. But uh, I'd love to have some returning faces as well as some new faces joining us. Okay. Thank you. All right. Today, um, today we will join together and partake of the Lord's Supper as part of our worship and uh, we will continue to just today to use the individual cups with the wafer and the juice um, we're not going to do that forever um, we will decide sometime soon to to restart our our old way of doing things um, i feel that communion is a very holy and sacred thing 
and the cup is a necessary thing right now, the, the things that we're using, but I, I would like it to be a more joined experience. So uh, we will do that today. Some point in the future, though, I'm going to revert to something else. I'm just kind of giving you a warning if it has to be a warning, but uh, that's just kind of the way I feel about it. So just so you know. But we will celebrate today and uh, uh, the, the Lord's Supper as part of our worship. Let's open in prayer. Almighty God and Father, uh, we have come today to worship. Uh, we lift up so many things in our heart to you. Um, but today, let us exalt the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Mighty One who has come, has given us redemption by his great sacrifice, and who will come again and, uh, and restore the world to its original beauty and perfection. Lord, as we come together, let Jesus be in our hearts and let it be a time of holiness as we share this table today. It's in the name of Jesus we join together and pray now. Amen. Our opening hymn is Grace Alone. I, this applies for all of us, but I was really thinking of Annie and Landon as they're about to start off on Brand New Journey. So if you'll stand and join us, the words are in your bulletin. Who was born of the virgin? <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm a little distracted this morning. Still not on. There we go. Let's start over. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Kevin called this morning and said he wasn't feeling well, so I asked if I would read the scripture for him. And this morning it's from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 9. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran and went to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Lorraine. Now is our prayer time. So uh, who might we lift up in prayer this morning? Mm. And what was her name again? I'm sorry. So uh, one, of the, one of the people Jessica worked with at her school had a, had a tragic death in, uh, in their family. And uh, the lady she works with is Angelica Green. So please be in, in prayer for the Green family and their loss at this time. Who else? I'm sorry? I have to walk back here to hear you. I'm sorry. That's right. It's a good one. So we'll be in prayer for Kevin Mitchell since he was not able to come today due to the way he feels. So thank you for that, Karen. Kevin Mitchell. That's Holda's great grandson. Yep, Holda's great grandson, Knox, and his, uh, he's a baby. And, uh, Right, so his, uh, his health problems, so be in prayer for Knox. <clears throat> Any others?
All right. Laura, okay. We'd ask that you keep our daughter, Laura, in your prayers. She's just going through some situations right now, and she's, uh, uh, she's in Orlando and uh, kind of by herself. She's got a lot of friends, but still, so keep Laura in your prayers. All right. Yeah. Okay. So Janet wanted us to be in prayer for the teachers and staff at schools. We will certainly lift them up today and next week. They actually go back tomorrow. So they'll be in the school tomorrow and then students come back the following week. So keep them in your prayers too. All right. Let's lift these prayers and our other prayers to God today. Almighty and holy God, we seek your holiness today. It is what makes our lives complete, even if we don't always recognize it, even if we don't always feel it and see it. The busyness of our own lives and the busyness of the world, the distractions of the world, do so much so often to separate us from you. That's one of the reasons, Father, that we can come together in worship. We come together as the body of Christ in this fellowship and in churches around the world to commune with you, to join with one another, and to share the love of Christ. But we also come to find that holiness. So much of the world, as we know, is, is just broken. It's sinful. It's must at times to you seem disgusting but there is always your holiness and it can be found through Jesus Christ it can be shared among his people and by the Holy Spirit that lives within us as we believe in Christ we too can be made holy one day God we celebrate the fact that you have promised us perfection through Jesus Christ and holiness that will allow us to live with you. God, as your church, let us find our purpose. Let us find your call. Let us find the ways that we can live within your holiness. We can live within your love. We can live within your power and your authority. We can live within your word. God, I pray for all the members of this church to find their place in that great mission and ministry. Let us hear your voice. Let us seek to know each one of us as individuals and collectively as the church how we are to serve, how we are to worship, how we are to live, how we are to find and practice holiness. As we come together today around your table, Father, let us have a measure of that, of the holiness of Christ and the great mystery that is communion. Lord, we lift up our prayer list to you today. We have lifted many to you, and today we call out the names of these. We call out Angelica Green and her family for comfort. We pray that Kevin, our brother, would be healed and would feel better soon. We pray for this little baby Knox to be healed, Father, that your power would be within him to be healed and to be whole and well. We lift up Laura, that she would find your peace and love. And God, we pray for those who are going back to school tomorrow, the teachers and staff at, at all of the schools around our, around our area, in our area, and also around the world that might be going back to school. Lord, pray your blessing on those who take care of and educate our children. May your spirit be with them. May your presence be available 
in the school this year. God, we are so thankful for this church. We are so thankful for your love. We are thankful for your forgiveness. We celebrate it today. We lift up these prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We will at this time have our offering. If our ushers would please come forward. Please stand. Father God, we bring our offering today. Sometimes it seems meager in the face of the great blessings that you shower down on each and every one of us. But Lord, it's a sign of our love and we offer it through our love for you. Please accept it for the good work of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let's pray. God, now as we hear your word, um, let it have a special resonance for us. Let it, let it fill us. 
Let us be changed by it. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're completing my introductory series uh, uh, where I attempt to give you a little insight into who I am and how I got to be a pastor in the Methodist Church or otherwise, I guess. Um, So the first uh, three of those sermons, in the first one you saw the importance of my background, my family, and and, uh, how they helped form an identity in me. Um, to worship and to to uh, to have faith in God, and how, in spite of that, the second sermon was about how I left God and uh, and kind of went out on my own, struck out on my own, and then last week we talked about how I, through God's grace, found my way home. And so, um, this sermon then is once I found my way home, um, that still doesn't get me to this pulpit today. Um, how do I, how did I move from where you are, worshiping God, faith in God, to the pulpit and to serve God in a, in a ministry sort of way? So that's what I want to talk about today. My progression from just um, identifying as a Christian, from pushing God away, from coming home, and then uh, growing in discipleship to, um, to more fully committed to God. God's calling is the process by which God the Father draws us all. He calls every one of us to serve and to worship Him. And part of that is that God opens our minds and gives us an understanding of His spiritual truth. God literally gives you an invitation. First, it's an invitation to salvation. Then it's an invitation to discipleship. And finally, it's an invitation to service. As we go through this sermon today, I want you to think about how you felt God calling you throughout your life. I want you to think about how God might be calling you today. I want you to think about how God is calling Northside United Methodist Church and what he has for this church in his greater scheme of things, his overall plan for humanity and for our community. Our scripture for today's sermon is from Ephesians chapter 4, the first 16 verses. So if you've got your Bible, open it now, and we'll read Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. In this passage, which has really spoken to my heart over the years about the calling that God has for each of us, we see Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, 
and explaining to them what it means to have a call and how we respond to it. Paul was a prisoner when he wrote this. But he starts off by reminding them that we have this calling from God. I too had a calling from God and it manifested itself in a restlessness within my heart to serve God. God is calling you. Are you trying to understand his calling? Through that calling, are you living a worthy life? And how have you let God change you through the call that he's placing on your life? Paul also writes about being humble, the spirit that we're to have. You know, one of the things that's really plagued me when I was trying to make a decision about whether to enter the ministry was whether I was good enough. And I'm going to tell you, quite frankly, the honest is no. I'm not. But no one is. I guess you've seen a little bit of that imperfection this morning. You know, sometimes thoughts just go right out of my head. <laughs> as many times as I've spoken the Apostles' Creed, just this morning it just left. I did that once with the Lord's Prayer, and I'll bet I've said that millions of times, literally, in my life. But anyway, Paul tells us to be humble, to be gentle. I try to have a humility, and I try to serve God in that way, and to have love for others, to understand that others aren't perfect either, and that they're going to fall, and sometimes their fall will hurt me, or it'll hurt others. But God calls us knowing all of that, and God calls us giving us a way to work through that. Paul also writes about unity and peace as people who follow Christ, about being one body and one spirit. It says, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. He reminds us that we should be about one thing as members of the church, as disciples of Christ, that we should come together to work for that one thing, which is the glory of God through Jesus Christ. I have told God that I will seek unity in our church, and I will seek unity in the Methodist church, and I will seek unity in the broader church, the universal church, because that's what he wants. He wants us to seek unity and fellowship with others, regardless of the way that he might call you individually. That's a call that we all share, to have unity, to have love, to have peace, to act as the body of Christ. It's important for us collectively as the church to seek and live God's call as the church and as an individual person. Jesus worked in community. Jesus worked with other people. He went away certainly at times to be alone, but most of the time that Jesus was here, he was with other people. He showed us the importance of being united. Paul goes on to write in verse 7 about grace. Methodists should be all about grace. John Wesley was all about grace. Paul tells us grace has been given to us by Jesus, the Holy Son of God. And this passage reminds us that he's the, reminds us he's the source of all our salvation. And that to be called by God is a high and a holy thing. I think sometimes in the church we've forgotten about holiness. Maybe it's my upbringing in, the, in a Catholic family. But sometimes we can forget of the holiness to be found in the church. Then Paul writes about the different people that God has sent our way. It says he sent apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And he says he sent those people to equip his people for works of service. So he has sent people like me and all of the other pastors that you've had here. He has sent youth pastors. He has sent music directors and pastors to minister, to answer a call and that call that we all feel is from Christ to serve him and to further his kingdom. You have a high and holy calling. 
whether it's to help pass out a popsicle, whether it's to fill a, uh, a backpack bag meal for a child over at the, the school across the street, whether it's to help with the Epworth closet, whether it's to take up the offering, whether it's to, you know, to set the table for communion, whatever it might be, it's a high and holy, holy calling. My call is here because that's where God sent me at this moment in time. He's brought us together to help equip this church and to grow myself, to equip this work, church for works of service so that we can build up the body of Christ and bring other people into relationship with him to live his great commission. Paul goes on down in verse 13 and he says, he talks about reaching full, reaching a kind of maturity and attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, he says. He says, then we'll no longer be infants. Sometimes I feel like an infant even though I've been in the church for a long, long time, most of my 62 years on this earth, some form or fashion, I've been associated with the church, and yet I'm still growing, I'm still maturing. He says we're to do that in love and to become the mature body of the head of our body, which is Christ. I am charged and called, and I can't be afraid to speak the truth in love so that we can grow and mature and become the body of Christ, loving one another and building each other up to be one body of Christ in support of the mission of Christ. We have to be committed and willing to change and mature as we follow Jesus and as he calls us. We have to live at his urging and based on his influence of our lives. We can't be static. We must move and work. We must move and work to do Jesus' work and fulfill that commission to make disciples of all the world. If I had not listened to God's call, I would still be sitting in a pew today thinking I was doing what God wanted me to do. But I decided maybe God wanted me to move. How is God calling you to move today? Is God, in your mind, done calling you? Because I guarantee you he's not. In the newsletter article that I wrote this month, you'll read about the seasons of our lives. God calls us in every season. So we have this passage from Paul, and I think just there's kind of three big themes three big things we can learn about that from this first of all we can learn and i've learned that god does call everyone every person who ever walks on the face of the earth will eventually be called by god and those who respond in faith and obedience will have eternal life with christ never be mistaken everyone has eternal life But there is a choice to be made. You can have eternal life with Christ, living in his glory, or you can reject Christ and live separately from Christ. We call that hell. And I will tell you whatever it is, we could argue what it is, but I will tell you it is not where you want to be. God is calling you. God calls us through nature, he, through other people, through circumstances, through scripture, through the church, through the Holy Spirit, and he calls us through prayer. John Wesley said that God calls us in kind of three ways, through his grace. He says he calls us proveniently, justifying, a justifying way, and a sanctifying way. Provenient grace is the grace of God calling you when you don't even know who God is. God calls us even when we don't know who he is. If you don't know what God wants for your life, know that God will call you in spite of that. God will lay that call on your heart. 
We can pray for understanding. We can seek his understanding. We as Methodists recognize God's work through this spiritual journey as a work of grace, as a work of salvation. God calls us all to seek salvation. 2 Peter chapter 3 explains God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. And 1 Peter 1, in 1 Peter 1, Peter writes, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. God wants us to find holiness in our lives. He wants us to reject the sin that might fill us. But as we grow in Christ, we see that the only way to make that happen is through faith in Christ because we are too weak to make that happen. And as we see in Ephesians 4, God calls us to ministry. God calls his people to ministry. So how did God call me? Well, I've told you of my family, of leaving the church, of coming back home. God put people in my life, though, that wouldn't let me ignore him. I met this beautiful woman in 1985 and she helped draw me back to the church. We made that decision. Sometimes we wonder if it was the right one, I guess, because we've really been turned upside down the last few years. But one of the ways that God calls you is by the people that he puts in your life through their encouragement. And it tells us about the importance of relationship and the importance of the church because once you get in the church, that's when you can grow. That's when you can truly see God's calling for you. You try to do that separate from the church and you're not going to have a very good time. It's going to be very confusing. But through other people like Jana, like friends of mine, a lady named Loretta McDaniel who invited us to church with her, we found our calling. It's important to be available to God by being in the church. It's important, it's important to be present at the church. It's not enough to just say, well, I'm a member of that church. You have to be there. And in these days, I know that's hard, but we're going to get beyond that. Participation is important, and a willingness to serve is important. Once we joined the church, that's when I saw God's call on my life um, come into clarity. And I was moved more and more, Sunday school teacher, lay speaker, serving everywhere in the church as an officer of the church, lay leader, head of account, the administrative council, etc. And at some point, God said, you know, do you really like this world around you that you see? And the answer was no. And I had a decision to make. Do I want to live my life to carry forth God's, God's gospel? To take that message to others? Or do I just want to sit on my hands? And I decided he wanted me to use whatever gifts he's given me to change whatever part of the world he wanted me to have influence on. And after consulting with others, I became a pastor in the Methodist Church. That's my call. And I'm so blessed that God has fulfilled that call. So point one is that God is calling us all. Point two, if God calls you, If God calls us all, then there's really not a question of, is God calling me? It's what is my call? It's not a question of who is, call, who is called. It's not a question of, have you been called? The question is, what is God's call in your life? Will you respond as the prophet Isaiah did and say, here am I, Lord, send me. Or will you be like Elijah in the Old Testament reading that Lorraine read today? Running and hiding in a cave, 
separate from everyone. We must seek God's call. We must answer it. And the question I have is, are you seeking it? Are we as a church seeking it? Or are you at a point in your life where you think, well, I'm just going to coast. I've earned it. I've done it. I'm just going to coast. One of the things I really enjoy doing, I haven't done it as much in the, recently, is, uh, is gardening. I love to garden. I'm a master gardener, trained years ago in that. I read gardening magazines. I read an article one time in a magazine called Fine Gardening, and it said, you know, there are four stages of laziness in the gardener. It says the first stage is, well, you start doing just as little as possible to get by. And then the second stage is you explain to yourself and to others why that little bit that you're doing is a good idea. Why it's a good idea just to do a little bit. Then the third stage is that you finally admit to yourself you really should have done something more. And then the fourth stage is promising yourself that you're really going to do what you ought to do. I think we could apply those same rules to our life in the church are you doing just enough or are you doing what God wants you to do the last thing I've learned about God's call is the consequences of obedience to God's call because it can be painful but it's only painful if you, rec if you think in worldly terms. Here are some things I can tell you when you're that will happen to you when you're obedient to God's call. Because this is what I've experienced. First, God will affirm your obedience. If you're obedient to his call, he will let you know that that's what you should be doing. Secondly, he will send people to encourage you that you're doing the thing God wants you to do. The third thing God will do is he will put you in a place, he will put you in a church that will nurture you in your faith if you answer his call. The fourth thing I can tell you about answering God's call is that in spite of your obedience, you may suffer difficulties because Satan, because Satan hates it when we draw closer to God. God wants you to ignore God's call. I'm sorry, Satan wants you to ignore God's call. And once you answer it, Satan's going to attack you somehow. And that's a difficult thing to understand, but he'll do it. I've seen it. The fifth thing I could tell you is you will most likely see God move in new ways in your life if you answer his call. You'll see him move in new ways. The sixth thing is your relationship with God will be strengthened. You will feel it too. So often we wonder, is God there? How is God moving in my life? You answer his call. You work for God. You be on his payroll, so to speak, on his staff. And you'll feel it. You'll know that you have a relationship with God. And the last thing that I can tell you about answering God's call is that your desire in life will be to more and more and more see God's kingdom grow. You'll want there to be less of you in your life and more of God in your life, and you'll want to make God's kingdom grow. Those are the things I've learned about God's call in my own life. Ultimately, God calls you because he wants you to move. He wants you to go from here to there because he's got something he needs you to do and you can't do it where you are God is the loving creator God he created us but he didn't stop when he created the world God is still creating today it's it's in his nature to make things to make things new to make better things he continues to great, create to create new things, including a new thing in you, a new thing in me, and a new thing in his church. 
Are you making yourself available to God? Are you seeking Him? Are you listening for His call in your life? How is He calling you? And how is He calling us? I pray that we will open our hearts and minds to Him and live that call that He has on our lives. And one final thing, it may not stop with this call, but we should always be true to the call that God places on our hearts. Amen. At this time, we will, uh, we will join together in the celebration of communion, the commemoration of communion. I have a hard time not using the word celebration, but honestly, it's a, com it's a commemoration of Jesus and the night of that Last Supper. If you want to follow along in the hymnal, you can uh, turn to page 12. I'm sorry, page 13, for the great thanksgiving. And as we start, I want everyone to know and always be remembered and mindful that this table is the table of Jesus Christ. It's not a Methodist table. It's not the church's table. It is the church, I'm sorry, the table of Jesus Christ. If you have faith in Christ, if you believe in Christ, Jesus calls you to share in this table. And so we do that today. So join me now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your mighty people on with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name Lord and we join in their unending hymn Holy 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 Lord God of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord hosanna in the highest Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks for this bread. He took it, he broke it, and he gave it to all of his disciples. And he said, this is my body which will be given for you. Do this, he said, in remembrance of me. And then after supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, God. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you that sins might be forgiven. He says, do this as often as you drink it also in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance, God, of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, God, on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, we will each take our communion elements. And the top layer exposes the wafer, so I ask you to please take the wafer. This is the body of Christ, broken for you, that your sins might be forgiven. Now remove that last cover. This is the blood of Christ shed for you to bring you eternal life and complete holiness. If you'll stand, our closing hymn is going to be Shout to the Lord. The words are in your bulletin.
Okay, um, at this time, if uh, Landon and his family and Annie and her family would come down. I didn't tell moms and dads I was going to have them come down too, so that's all right. They're, and, and Kaylee, sorry. So we're, you know, it's moments like this that are, that are exciting because we're excited for you. It's sad for us, though, because, and you know, it's, I mean, honestly, I've only been here a few weeks, but it's just, you know, it's sad that I won't get to spend more time than I have. We'll see you. I know that. I mean, I understand that. Believe me. But, you know, it's a little different than having you here all, all the time. And believe me, mom and dad and sisters and family know that. So, um, it, but it's a time of, of great blessing, a time of change in your life. So you're going to Anderson University. And what will you be studying? I'm undecided. Undecided. Well, that's okay. You'll figure it out. Okay, you're enrolled, so you have classes to take. So, you know, that one down there on the end. So we took her to the University of South Carolina, and she's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing. I want to do this. That's what I want to do. I'm going to do this. We got there, went through the orientation, went to enroll her, and she said, I don't think I want to do that. (laughs) So you can decide. Okay, so you'll figure that out. And you're going to the governor's school, is that right? So you're going to, what's the word? You're going to focus on dance, right? Okay. And that is in Greenville, right? Yeah, the governor's, yeah. It's not, it's not far away, but for Jessica, it'll seem like light years away because Lamb is not here. But, uh, but uh, I know that's got to be exciting for you. And uh, I know our, our daughter, Laura, you know, she, she has lived dance all of her life, and I know how much it means to her to be able to focus on that. So... So we're excited for you, and uh, we're excited for you to get uh, to get to do that. So let us join together, and and we do pray for mom and dad and sisters, and mom. So um, let's join together and pray as we leave today. Let's pray, dear God. Uh, we're so grateful that uh, that uh, we uh, fellowship with Landon and with Annie, and pray your blessing on them as they go into this this new and exciting time in their lives. Lord, let them, let them feel your call on their lives at this time, not just for what they can do for you, but Lord, we pray that they would find their way in life um, to do something they enjoy and to, uh, to learn and to grow in this, uh, in this new time, this new season, this new place in their lives. And, and Lord, we pray for, uh, we pray for uh, Jessica and Kim and Clay and Kaylee and all family members as, as there's this kind of separation going on. Let us let us love on them a little extra in this time, but we pray your blessing on these families as uh, they begin something new, and uh, let it be an exciting and uh, fulfilling time in their lives. We thank you for the, uh, for the witness, for the faith, for the uh, fellowship of these families, Lord, and pray your hand is on them as they go forth today. It's in the name of Jesus that we uh, seek you all today. Uh, um, we all seek you today, God. Uh, amen. So I'd ask you all to just kind of join me at the back so that people can wish you well, okay? So with that, we will see everyone next week. God bless.